Hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. In today's episode, we're being a little bit more proactive and optimistic and talking about marketing, all the things that you can do now to make your recovery so much better when the time comes. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new, and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. I am super happy to be back with you. I'm going to talk about the weather just for a moment. I haven't talked about weather for ages. Here we are, almost coming up to mid-April, and there's snow on the ground again. You see, we should not have come back from Texas this early. We weren't meant to be back until the 21st of April, at which time the snow will have gone, the ice would have gone. But hey... We're all in this together. We're all appreciating life in very different ways at the moment. So, you know, I appreciate the snow in April. I was able to get out for an hour today to go for a walk and it was absolutely beautiful. The spring is still coming. The sun is still coming up in the morning and it's still going down at night and the seasons will still change whatever's happening out there. So today I want to be a little bit more optimistic. I want to think ahead. I want to start thinking about how we can use the time we have to our advantage. I know that most of us are still dealing with a slew of cancellations and refund requests and wondering how long this is all going to go on and if we're going to have a summer at all. But what we can do in the midst of all that speculation and wondering is make some plans for marketing. And there are things that we can do to market our businesses right now. There are some things we can do to prepare for when the recovery time comes and for when people start traveling again. So in today's episode, I have asked Matt Bear of Q4 Launch to come along and join me and talk about marketing through and beyond this crisis. So I'm delighted to have with me today, Matt Bear from Q4 Launch. It's a marketing company and Matt's going to tell us a little bit about what he does in this marketing arena for vacation rentals and how how he got started. So welcome, Matt. It's a pleasure to have you with me. Thanks, Heather. Excited to be with you today. Thanks for the invitation. Well, we've met sort of very, very briefly at VRMA conferences. You know, I've sort of passed (laughs) by your, your, your booth and said hello and I've always said Got to get you on the podcast to talk about marketing (laughs) because this is what you do. And you've been on my list for so long. And here we are at a time when I think that marketing is just so super important. So just so glad to have you. So how did you get into this crazy business? Yeah, great question. So uh, Q4 launch started. We're about to celebrate our 12th anniversary. And the first few years as an agency, we were really just a local marketing agency. We're based in Charleston, South Carolina, what we like to call the home of hospitality. But uh, we're surrounded by great hotels, great resorts, great vacation rental managers. And our first um, kind of step into hospitality was actually working with a local hotel here and just realized that we were having a ton of fun and having a lot of success. Was then referred to a local vacation rental manager, realized how similar in a lot of ways those businesses are, but also how different they are. And was having a lot of success there. And we kind of, we were literally sitting on the creek having beers one day and uh, here in Charleston and, and said, um, man, if we had a lot more companies like this, like the hotel we work with, like the vacation management company we're working with, this would be a lot more fun. Uh, we were doing a lot of work in the home building space at the time, which was very profitable, but just brutal. And, uh, and we set out over about the next year to kind of retool our systems processes to focus exclusively into the vacation rental management space. And that was probably eight years ago at this point, seven years ago. And it's been that uh, just 100% vacation ever since. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it started out as a passion. You know, we love travel and we love digital marketing. And when those two, two things came together, um, it really hit a sweet spot for me as an entrepreneur and then for us as an agency as well. We were pretty small back then. There were two or three of us. There's 50 of us now. So we've scaled significantly in that period of time. But, but it's been a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I sat in on, well, I've, I've sat in on a couple of the presentations you've done at VRMA conferences in, in past years and, and loved your approach to marketing. So what I wanted to do today was really take what you do in your normal day-to-day work <laughs> and, and translate it into what we're facing at the moment with so many property managers now downsized to, uh, to, to, to small amounts of staff dealing with multiple cancellations, dealing with outright rental bans uh, in many, many places, and not sure where this is all going to start again. So really traditional marketing plans, and certainly for me as a property manager, they've gone out the window, but I don't want to stop marketing. I just don't really know how to do it right now. So, <laughs> so I'm going to pick your brains really as to how, you know, what do we do now? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great question because this is not business as as usual. And I think in kind of the first two weeks of this crisis that we found ourselves in, kind of that middle of March timeframe, there was a lot of fear around marketing. And we were fielding customers from calls from our customers with campaigns we had already completed, scheduled to go out the door. All we had to do was hit send. And uh, and they're like, "Ah, I don't want to send that. You know, there was this fear around it. And I've never been in a period of, of time as a digital marketer or a marketer in general where there was a fear about sending marketing. But the the good news is that I think we're in a new normal, right? We don't love that normal, but we're in a new normal and we've kind of found our footing as marketers, as vacational managers, and we kind of know what's okay and what's not okay in, in this time. And, and that's a really important point because as you said just a minute ago, it's not stop marketing. Um, and some of the traditional messaging needs to shift. I think many of the traditional mediums, thinking mediums like email, social, you know, search, still work really, really well. It's just that the messaging needs to shift. Now's not the time to come out with a strong book now messaging and expect to see, you know, this specific ROI on that campaign. But now is the time to lean into your marketing and lean into your customer base. Because I think what you'll find from your customers in this season, from your guests, is a a period of empathy unlike anything you've probably experienced as a business before. And that's one of the things we've been talking to our team about as I lead our staff on how to best interact with our customers and so forth. One of the first things I told them was, we will be remembered as a company for the way we respond to our customers with empathy in this season. And I I think that same message is true for vacation rental managers is, how do you respond to your homeowners? How do you respond to your guests with empathy. And that's looked like a lot of different things as we've talked to customers. I mean, customers have been with us since some of the early days that I've stayed in their properties and I know them really well. And they've, you know, they've sent us baby gifts when our daughters have been born and those kind of people. And and I've been on the phone with them just in all out tears, like crying about the season and the loss and the, the grieving. And I've grieved with them. At the same time, I've been on the phone with customers that are dealing with it differently and, and just listened as they've yelled and they've screamed and they've been angry about the situation. Um, and I've you know just listened to that voice as well. So that empathy, I think, is something that's so important for us, all of us, to really experience and just to be a listening ear for our homeowners who are mourning the potential lost income they're going to have this year. And what does that mean for their ability to pay their mortgage and to keep this property in their family for generations, if it's that, or the staff that you're trying to empathize with as you're trying to, as you're being forced to lay them off, which many of us have been fiscally conservative. And we thought that was enough to never have to, to go do this kind of stuff. But now we're faced with, with times that we've never seen before uh, as a world, really. Um, and it's just a really interesting season. I love how you're using that word empathy and it's just so important at this moment because every single person in the world is going through the same thing. So, (laughs) you know, empathy is about understanding where somebody else is coming from. Having said that, you've been talking about mourning and grief. And of course, we all go through grief in different ways. So we may be empathizing, but we, we need to know where we're at as well in that cycle of grief. You know, I, before we started to record, I was saying, you know, I feel that I've got to the end of my cycle, which is acceptance. You know, I accept that this is, it is what it is. And, and I'm now ready to move to the next level. But I know that we're dealing with people who are still in the anger stage. Mm-hmm. I mean, certainly some of our owners are, they're still angry. And there are still some who are in the negotiation stage 
and <laughs> who are saying if we tell guests that that they can move their dates to a, to another to, to next year, maybe we can we don't have to refund them. And so so it's 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 very interesting that that you mentioned that whole thing about mourning and grief because that's what everybody's going through and it's just I just think it's worthwhile remembering that we're all at different stages we are absolutely and I think as we move through our own different stages and we're all on our own personal journey there it's important to take a look at the the back side of this so you know we I led a conversation which is you know had a lot of attention and, and really on how to market in through and out of this crisis mm-hmm. And that conversation is really different, right? Because it it talks in and of itself, just in the title about how you navigate through those different stages. But as I think, as we look at the, the in this crisis part of that, and it ties back into that empathy, one of the the encouragements that I gave to our team to work with their customers on, and I gave um, in some of the other content we've created is, is really about getting personal with your customers and being real with them about what's going on in the season, about the struggles that you're having, about a lot of those things. And that's what I've tried to do with our staff as well is just getting personal and getting real and being very transparent about, hey, this is where we're at. These are the things we're struggling with. This is the stuff we're not so sure about. But at the same time that we're getting personal and getting real, and social media is a great platform to do that, by the way, and and posting pictures and posting videos and, and being the face of your brand as a vacation rental manager that maybe you haven't been before, but our customers who are doing that in social media and we're helping them think through that from a strategy perspective, but are seeing incredible traction there. Not bookings, right? That's not what this is about, but they're seeing incredible empathy from their customers, which we believe builds brand loyalty and builds um, the comeback, you know, on the backside of this. So you're positioning yourself for a stronger comeback. And it's not about the positioning, but it's about that relationship that you're developing with your guests and with your homeowners through this part, just by being more personal and being more real. And as you do that at the same point, it's important when you step out, right, as the leader of the organization that that you're real, you're transparent, but you're confident. And that, that, that your homeowners, your guests, your staff, really your three customers that you have as an entrepreneur or as a vacational manager are seeing and understanding your confidence and they are living off of your confidence. Like whether they have their own or not, they are living vicariously off of yours. And, and some of the, the internal videos we've sent out to our customers, internal videos we've seen to our staff, I think that has been um, something I've learned a lot about as a leader through this is that while I've had my own struggles, my own fears, my own time of mourning and grief and anger, it is, as I step out as a leader, it's important for me to understand that that my team, my customers, my guests need to live out of my confidence because they don't have their own all the time to live out of. And that's what they need from me as a leader in this season. And we've all got to understand, you know, as, as empathetic and as emotionally intelligent leaders, what our audiences need from us. Um, but being able to step into some of those gaps, this and it goes beyond like marketing tactics, right? Like it comes down to the core of who you are as a human and who you are as a leader. But it's so important because that true core of who you are is revealed in these times of crisis. What sort of examples have you got? You're saying that some of your 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 clients are putting out material on social media. What sort of things are they are they saying? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of them just talking about, you know, talking about this, the reality of the situation, you know, things relevant to, you know, we hate that you're losing your, your, you know, that this, this, these bookings have been lost for this season. And it's not about the booking, right? That's not the right word in that context, but that those memories aren't going to be made in this season, but we believe there will be a season where those memories are made again. And we believe that season's not very far away and thanking people for being a customer. There's a restaurant we frequent and um, they did a beautiful job of, of sending out a, a communication from the owner of the restaurant. And he said, you know, the first thing he started with was first and foremost, let me say thank you for the outpouring of support. You are customers have shown us. You are the best customers that a business could ever hope for or imagine um, having. So thank you for being you and for supporting us through this time. And in statements like that, you're making it not about you, but you're making it and you're getting the opportunity to say thank you for the support that your audience and that your customer base and that your employees and your your homeowners are showing you. 
And that starts to just tap into that inner empathy, I think, that that lives inside of all of us. Sometimes it's buried a little bit deeper in, in some of us, but but lives inside of us. And those are the things I think as we lean into starts to build that loyalty. And it's like, yeah, you're right. I really do love your business. I do love your restaurant. I do love your vacation rental management company. I do um, love your destination. And, and you start to build a bond with those people in that time of crisis that when you come out the other side of this positions you to get their business back again. I like this idea of, of getting personal. I was talking to um, a property manager last week, Sharon Mitchie from Cottages to Castles of Sanibel and Captiva. And she was, she was talking about how she's getting ahead of everything, getting to her guests before they come to her and ask about their future reservations before they say, I've got a reservation in July or August, and I don't know whether that's going to happen. She's getting out there ahead of it and say, hey, we know you're concerned whether your summer vacation is going to happen. And and she's just saying, you know, we don't know where we are at the moment with this. We hope it's going to happen, but we will tell you as soon as we know something. Mm -hmm. So she's up front and it is, it's about getting personal. It's about this one-to-one and saying, I understand that you're concerned about you know, the, whether you've got the money to pay for it now. Yeah, absolutely. And in doing that, you're, I mean, you're addressing the elephant in the room, right? We're all thinking it. It's just, she's stepping in and controlling the dialogue and exactly. controlling the conversation yeah. and putting the guest at ease saying, okay, I trust this person because they've got this under control. They're mon- they're managing this, they're monitoring it. So I don't have to, mm-hmm. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to ask the questions. There's uncertainty. We can't solve for all that, but we can step into the the void, if you will, and, and address that elephant in the room with, with the guest. Yeah. And, it, and she's doing it perfectly. And we've, this is something that I, you know, I've learned from her and now we're starting to do this, but you said something a bit earlier on about the way that guests are reacting. I mean, we've had a large number of owners who've taken their summer back. They don't want to rent their properties anymore. So we've had to go to all the guests and say, sorry, we are canceling you for July and August. And it's hundred percent response or, you know, just lovely responses from everybody. (laughs) We completely understand. We expected this, you know, we're, we're, we're disappointed, but you know, we, we, we understand that it's going to happen. So as you say, I I don't think we've ever gone this ever had to go to a guest and say, I'm sorry, the owner has sold their property. They've, they've canceled on you and had such a warm response from every single one of them. (laughs) It will never happen again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that speaks to just this uniqueness and kind of this sense globally. I mean, I don't, I can't, think in recent history of a time we've faced a global crisis like this, right? I mean, smaller people groups, countries for sure face a crisis, but not a global mm-hmm. crisis like this. And and it's created a, a bond and a unity across the globe that is unique. And that's a great, a great positive thing, I think, that's coming out of a lot of this. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's get practical here. What can we, uh, I mean, one thing I wanted to ask you, because I know this is, you know, we have a marketing department and, uh, you know, of one <laughs> and, <laughs> and Caitlin has worked really hard at setting up her editorial schedule for months in advance. And it's all set out, all her social media posts are set out at least six to eight weeks in advance. What should we be doing about that? Should we just abandon it entirely? Because some of these, some of these posts, of course, are no longer appropriate. Right. Absolutely. That's a great question. And, and something else I've been talking to our team about, because we do quarterly planning for all of our customers. So we lay things out a quarter at a time, maybe not down to every single social post for every single day, but lay that out because we want to be very uh, think ahead type of mm-hmm. type of people and help our customers do the same thing. And one of the things I've talked to our team about is that we need to be thinking long term, but planning short term. And I, I straight stole that from Craig Rochelle on a webinar he did about how to deal with crisis. If you don't follow Craig Rochelle, he's a, a large, uh, one of the most renowned leaders in the United States and, and speaks a lot on leadership. But but the point in that being that we need to be thinking about what we want to look like on the other side of this, right? About how do we build loyalty? How do we want to be positioned in our marketplace? How What do we want to be known for? We need to be thinking about a lot of those things but at the same point, we need to be planning short term because there's information coming at us so fast that it's changing all the time. And when information is changing at the pace it is right now, plans have to be thrown out the window pretty regularly. So for us as a, as a group, 
we're pretty much throwing our quarterly marketing plans. We put so much time and energy into and many, uh, well, at this point in April, all of those have been reviewed and approved by customers, um, but we're throwing them out the window and we're, we're kind of just taking them a week at a time and saying, okay, we're going to put our communication together a week at a time. We're not stopping communicating. To your point earlier, we're not going dark. The worst thing you can do right now is go dark. Your guests need to hear from you. Your homeowners need to hear from you. People need to hear from you. The message just needs to be different. So don't go dark. Have a different message. And as you're planning that message, align it up to what you want your long-term business strategy to be. Say, okay, what do I want to be remembered for on the backside of this as a company? As soon as it hit, that was the first thing I went to our team with. What do we want to be remembered for on the backside of this thing? So I really started aligning their thinking to the long-term. And then we worked backwards with our plans from a short-term perspective from there. That makes a huge amount of sense. Yeah, I need to get my head around that. You know, what do we want to be? And I know something we want to be remembered for. And I posted in our Facebook group this morning uh, a piece from the Consumer Association, which which is a is big in the UK, and they were talking about Ho Seasons uh, cottage rentals and Sykes cottage rentals in in UK. They're sticking pretty much with strict cancellation policies at the moment. And, and and simply saying, you know, you either you don't get your money back, you can have a voucher. And I know for one, I was I was due to go to UK in three weeks' time, <laughs> and I had my you know, Air Canada have told me that I can have a voucher for travel up to next March, and I can't see me traveling up to next March. So I'm already anti. You know, I've I've gone through the anger again, and I'm never mm-hmm. flying with Air Canada again. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't want to be remembered like that. I don't want to come out at the end and be remembered as the company that that held me to ransom over right. over a booking. Um, right. So I want to be remembered for being empathetic, being being open to people's issues, and and being very flexible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's important. And just understand, you know, flipping that table. Um, and I think one of the things we talk to our team about in times that there's conflict as well is try to get on the same side of the issue with the customer. So as a vacation rental managers, if we're talking about a cancellation with a guest, you, you want to, I think oftentimes we sit on opposite sides of the table and we have the issue between us, right? So we're kind of both coming at that issue. But the visual we paint with our team is literally sit down on the other side of the table, shoulder to shoulder with the guest, with the customer, put the issue in front of both of you and say, okay, now we're shoulder to shoulder. Let's solve this together. Like, Mm -hmm. how can we solve this in a way that works for you? So you might still get to a place that you have a voucher for a future booking, but those are one-on-one conversations with individual guests, which is time consuming. and, And some people may not have the scale in their business to be able to do that. Um, but it's really getting on the same side of the table, getting on the same side of the issue, looking at it and working on solving the issue together, as opposed to letting it be something that divides you and creates conflict between you. Mm-hmm. And in that kind of Air Canada example, you know, they just, they've got to do something at a, at a scale, right? So they, they've chose something that's a bit more aggressive than many other airlines have, but it kind of divides you in a way that doesn't really feel good. And it creates that negative brand association that you then have with them. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, I joined a class action law lawsuit against Air Canada. So you know, yeah. <laughs> when, when I, I just made these notes here, what do you want to be remembered for? <laughs> well, Air Canada, you're going to be remembered <laughs> for the class action lawsuit that I joined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that, that, that's tough. Yeah. You know, I, I really mean, I know, I know it's, I know it's tough on the airlines whether, you know, whether they've got oh. the, the money to actually refund everybody anyway, but that's, that's another topic. So, so I'm going to talk to, um, to Caitlin about, you know, abandoning what we're doing, what we had in place, which we had pretty much anyway. But I know she's going to say to me, well, what should I be posting right now in terms of content, in terms of blog posts? You know, should I be optimistic and talking about the summer when the summer may not happen? Yeah, I think generally a voice of optimism is always appreciated in this in this time, right? So, you know, you may not be talking about specific dates or specific events because there is uncertainty around that. But at the same point, people know about that uncertainty, you know? So I think there's definitely opportunities to talk about what you're working on as a business. And as part of that getting personal, maybe talking about things going on in your business you wouldn't normally talk about because your mm-hmm. content is so destination focused. I think some of the other things we can do is share content from our destination. You know, a lot of people have jumped on this bandwagon of the virtual vacation. 
uh, but really being able to just share content. If you can get out in your destination, so I, I always preface that with, you know, follow your local regulations because they're so different everywhere. But one of the things we've encouraged people to do is go to some of your favorite hotspots in your destination, if you can, and go live. You know, we've seen more people going on live and social media than any other time before. There's one of the uh, friend of mine uh, works for one of our top tour companies here in the Charleston area. And they, I think two or three times a day, have their tour guides going to different places that they do tours on a regular basis. And they're doing their tour live from that place. And it's all free for their social media followers, just trying to keep their audience engaged and add value to people that, uh, that are just at home with more time on their hands than they've ever had before. And that's, and I'll circle back to that and talk about some other things we're seeing from a behavior perspective as it relates to that time on people's hands, but, but just finding ways to connect with the audience. They're different than they, than they are in other seasons, but we also have, you know, once the cancellation conversations are are over, at least for that season, we have more time on our hands as marketers, as owners, as vacation room managers than we normally do. So there's some time to plan for the future there. There's some time to make some changes in your business that you might not have otherwise been able to make because now you have more time to do that. Um, and to just, you know, find new ways and new ideas and new, new opportunities to connect with guests and homeowners. Yeah. Well, so what sort of content are you suggesting, you know, apart from, from, from the video and the tours, what about written content, blog content and preparing for recovery really with not knowing when that recovery is going to happen? Yeah. So I think the not knowing when the recovery thing is going to happen plays back into the think long term, but plan short term we talked about. And I'll, I'll give you some additional thoughts on that um, in here in just a minute. As we think about the content and blogs specifically, I think there's a couple things we can do. One, we can resurface old blog content similar to the video idea that I talked about, you know, just pointing people back to, Hey, I wrote this blog about, you know, this whale watching experience or this shark diving experience or this, um, awesome place to go do this. And while you can't experience it right now, you can check out my photos and read my blog about it. So you can use social media and email marketing to resurface some of that content that you've written in the past. Mm -hmm. You can also use this time and more downtime specifically to kind of redo some of that old content. You know, one of the things we know about content marketing is that over a period of time, usually somewhere in the one to three year range, Google kind of starts to discount older content from a ranking perspective and you'll start seeing it slipping in the rankings. Most people don't really know how to track this in their analytics. They're not doing it on a regular basis, but it's a fixture of our content marketing strategy so that when we see rankings slip, we go back and we revitalize that content, update the publish date, and there's a whole strategy about how to do that well. But this is a period of time you might be able to do some of that that you normally aren't doing. You can also start to create some more evergreen style content that will live beyond this pandemic or this crisis that will serve you in the future. You know, so you can create some of that how-to content or places to see style content uh, for your website and for your your marketing strategy or your guest life cycles in the season where you have some more time. I saw a wonderful post yesterday on a property management site. And, and it was quite a lengthy article on how to plan a family reunion, you know, from yeah fr- the, the whole thing about, you know, finding out what people's likes and dislikes are as far as food is concerned, thinking about meal planning. And it, it just went through everything. It was, it was, it was a terrific <laughs> post. If I can, um, if I can dig it out, I shall put it in the show notes because it's really worthwhile reading because that was just a great evergreen post. It was a how to post and it transcends everything. And of course, the other thing is, is that when we get out of this, people haven't seen people for a long, long time. And it could be that's the first thing that people are going to do to say, well, now we can get together again. Let's rent somewhere and all go there together so we can all get together and talk about our our relevant experiences and 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 reconnect, of course. So a post like that could you know, cover a whole range of, of, uh, of topics. Yeah. And it creates value in this season where people have more time to plan that family reunion, but it will also create evergreen value. You know, Mm -hmm. that's something that many of us target on a regular basis is that, that large family reunion with our larger homes. Yes. yes. One of the things, as I was talking about, you know, marketing out of this crisis, and, and I said, I'd circle back to, 
And it was an analogy that kind of came to me as I was thinking and preparing for some conversations we were having as well. But one of the things I talked about was not going dark and the importance of staying in the game that we need to keep marketing. We just need our message to be different. It'd be easy to actually argue that you actually need to market more in this season just with a different message. But the analogy that I use that I think really connected with a lot of people and I got a lot of feedback on was this analogy of a surfer. And I live in Charleston, as I said, so we're a beach destination, but I'm sure you mountain destinations can connect with this as well. Um, and that was the idea that if you watch a surfer and they're trying to catch a wave, and, and I use the wave as part of this because we believe there's going to be a wave of bookings on the back end of this. There's going to be all the bookings that were canceled that are looking to rebook when there's an end in sight. We don't know when that's going to be, but I'll come to that as well. But there's going to be this wave of bookings, people looking to rebook. Also, all the bookings that normally would have happened in this period of time that haven't booked. And there's, we believe, going to be a one to two week period where there's this wave of bookings that happens. And we see our job as a marketing agency to help our customers be prepared to catch that wave when it comes, which ties into the surfing analogy. And as such, with a surfer, you can't predict when the wave is going to come. So you have a choice, right? You can sit on the beach and you can watch for the wave to come. And you can run out there, grab your board, paddle as fast as you can to try to get out there and catch it. And the reality is you will never catch that wave if that's your approach. Or you can be out in the water. You can be paddling around. You can be watching other surfers. You can be looking down the beach. You can be looking up the beach. You can be looking out to sea to see what the water is doing. And when you're in that position, when you're in an active position, when you're in the water, literally, you have an opportunity to catch waves. And if you go to the beach or if you pull up a quick YouTube video to give yourself a mental health break uh, in this season, watch what surfers do and watch how they surf because you'll see that they're in the water, they're there, they're taking their approach, they're pattering around slowly. But when they see the wave coming, they've put themselves in a position to paddle like hell and catch that wave. And I think as marketers, that's exactly where we need to be. We need to be in the water. We need to be paddling around. We need to be looking at all the data, the indicators. So when the wave starts to come, we can paddle like hell and catch that wave because it's going to be a great wave, a strong wave, but a short-lived wave. And because it's unpredictable, we have to keep planning, planning, planning like that wave is on its way. Because people are still, if, if you've followed me and you've heard me talk about the dreaming, the five stages of travel, dreaming, planning, booking, experiencing, remembering, people are very much dreaming and planning right now. They're just stalling out before they get to the booking stage. So they're making decisions. They're just not acting on that decision. So the decision's been made as soon as the end is in sight, which is going to be a very different date in different markets. But as soon as the end is in sight and where different markets start opening up and beaches open up and Ski mountains probably aren't going to open up because it's going to be summer by that time, but you get the point. When, as soon as that end is in sight in your destination, it's going to be too late to get up off your seat in the sand and paddle out there and catch the wave. So you've got to stay in the water. You've got to change your approach, but you've got to stay in the water, keep marketing, and put yourself in a position to catch that wave. That is a brilliant analogy, and you've just given me the title for this blog, uh, for this for this podcast too. <laughs> <laughs> so I shall use that. But yes, it, it 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 is just a great analogy. And I think there may be a lot of people sitting on the beach. And so it's <laughs> I think there's a lot of people sitting on the beach that are going to miss a huge opportunity. Yeah. So it's a huge, such a competitive advantage to be out there and looking in all, and, and I like that, looking in all those different directions as well, because there's going to be hints and clues on how to catch that wave around Absolutely. and about you. Yeah, that is great. What else can you help with getting out of this? Oh, what else can we help with getting out of this? I think there's just a lot that can be done in this season. And I think that's an important thing as we move through it. Honestly, we've had more conversations with people about doing new websites with prospective <laughs> customers, probably in the last 15 days and in a long time, because it's like, well, I've got more margin, I've got more time. Um, and we're finding unique ways to help them, you know, fund that from a financing perspective, because time is an abundance right now, but money is not an abundance for a lot of people. So we're finding unique ways to do that. But but using that as a season and, and web, it might be a website for you. It might be something else, but just saying, you know, many of our hotel clients are doing renovations that they never thought they would do in this season. And they're telling that story on social media. Well, 
Um, some of your homeowners, you know, could be doing that as well, using this season to renovate or, or do something that they might not have gotten to otherwise, if they're, you know, if they're in destination using their own property, but just looking for things and, and stepping out of the grief flow, like you need to spend a certain amount of time there. But I think it can be dangerous to, to stay in that current, if you will, and not break out of that current and get into a current of my response is my responsibility. That's something else we talk a lot about at Q4 and that we can't control the circumstance, right? But we can control our response and our response is our responsibility. So we can't control that COVID happened. We can't control these cancellations, but we can control our response and take responsibility for that. And I think looking for those opportunities to say, okay, what do we want to get, what do we want to have done on the other end of this and use this time strategically rather than just stay in the wallowing. And for us, and, and one of the encouragements I've also given our team is get out of the media, right? The media <laughs> wants to propagate this message of fear and destruction and everything else. And you've got to pull your head out of that, or you're going to stay in the current of negativity and fear. You've mm-hmm. got to get out of that. You got to spend some time there. You don't want to be ignorant, right? That's not about, that's not what I'm saying, but you have to step out of that. And I, I challenge our team to spend 30 minutes or less there every day, when in reality, I'm probably spending five minutes or less there every day. Because when I, what I find is when I spend too much time there, I fall into that current of negativity and pessimism. And what I want is focused on strategy, focus on where I want to be on the backside of this, focusing on what I need to be doing as a leader, you know, focusing on those things. And that brings a lot of, that brings a lot of life to a situation as opposed to death to a situation. And and I think hopefully you can find some encouragement in that as well. Just controlling your time and and where you're investing that time. That's wise advice. You know, I I know, and I think we've all fallen into this, this uh, this endless scrolling through Facebook um, pages (laughs) and Googling (laughs) COVID-19. I've done this. What are we hoping to find? (laughs) What are we hoping to find? Yeah, absolutely. And I've probably been doing that since February. But I, I, have to, I have to say, we've been tempered in our household because we're, we're currently looking after grandchildren because my, both my son and my daughter-in-law are first responders. Oh, so yeah. he's a firefighter, she's a paramedic, they're in Toronto, and we're way out in a, in a rural location. So we have their kids. Now, sadly, they're not seeing their children except on, oh, on, wow, except on Facebook Messenger until this is all over. Right. Um, but, uh, but one thing we appreciated very early on when we had a six and a seven-year-old is we do not have the news on. We don't have any media out there for them to see because mm-hmm. imme- they know what mummy and daddy do. Right. And, and it's, it's tough for them. But certainly for, for everybody, I think that is such wise advice. You just, <laughs> just get out of it. It isn't going to change. Five, ten minutes a day just to catch up, see what's, uh, you know, w- what the trend is. But apart yeah. from that, I mean, we can't do anything about shortages of medical equipment or you know, other things that are going on. <laughs> so, so we can't why, convert our homes into uh, manufacturing facilities to uh, create. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, wise advice. Thank you for that. Hey, um, Matt, this has been absolutely, I wish, gosh, we should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope we'll get back to do this. And, and maybe that's what we should do. Take this to the, to the next level. You know, what do we do now? It's, it's done and dusted. Uh, maybe some of us were on the beach. And, <laughs> and hadn't listened to this <laughs> and missed the opportunity. Missed the opportunity. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we should, we should do that. Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure having you, having you with me today. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining Absolutely, me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for um, giving me an opportunity to share some of the things that, that we're thinking about and working on. I hope it's beneficial to your listeners and if there's anything we can do to help. Um, I'm sure Heather will put our contact information out. Don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be happy to help anybody who needs help thinking through this or taking action on anything we've talked about today. I, I will do indeed. I'll put, uh, put information on uh, Q4 launch at the uh, end of the show notes. And, and you can, if, if you're interested in contacting Matt and finding out more about what, uh, what the company does, then um, you've got that information there. So, uh, yeah, great pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your Easter. (laughs) Thanks, Heather. You too. (laughs) 
I really wanted to do an episode that was more optimistic and thought towards the future rather than staying in really staying in the present and doing a you know oh my god what are we doing now so I think Matt really set the great tone there in talking about what we can do to get to the other side of it and be prepared and I love the analogy about uh, surfing that was terrific I'm going to use that for sure so as I said if you want to know more about Matt's company get in touch with him and talk about marketing for the future just go to the show notes where you will see the link to his website which is called q4 figure 4 launch.com go and take a look at that and and talk to matt he was uh, he he's got such a great insight into this business into into the guest journey that is something that i got from one of his presentations a couple of years ago and and i sat there and i was enthralled with the the whole delivery and the knowledge that matt has about guest behavior and personas and guest expectations so you, you if you get the chance at a at a future vrma or at a future event where matt's talking then i would definitely go along and take a listen so next week we'll be talking to another property manager in our series and the new series of In the Trenches. And what I'm doing with these is just recording them a couple of days before they're published because it seems pointless doing it weeks and weeks before. So I'm wanting to try and bring you really fresh conversation of what it's like for these business owners right at this time and how they're, they're dealing with it, how they're handling the day-to-day issues as they come up. So watch out for that. that. That will be part two of our In the Trenches series. So until then, please don't forget to go to iTunes. That would be great. Give me a rating. Of course, I want a five-star rating, <laughs> just like you love a five-star rating for your properties. But uh, the, the more good ratings we have, the higher the podcast goes up in the rankings and more people get to listen to it. And, uh, and hopefully more people we're able to help and encourage and support. So thank you for doing that. So that's it. I'm done for this week. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.